Isn't God good? So good. Hallelujah. We're so glad to have all of you with us. We're so glad glad to have our Facebook. Are we live? We're so glad to have our Facebook and our YouTube people with us. That today is the day that the Lord has made. And we choose to worship him and to lift him up this morning. Hallelujah. The pastor's not here this morning. We had to take care of some plumbing business at my house so he's taking care of business here but we're going to continue to lift up the lord we're just going to do it all at once this morning so we can just let the holy spirit flow we're going to go ahead and uh bless our our giving this morning how many know that giving is part of worship hallelujah and god loves a cheerful giver and we thank god for all of you that give all of you who don't have to give god will bless you press run it over for you to be able to give. Hallelujah. We are blessed to be a blessing. Yes, amen. I raise your right hand in covenant. Thank you, Lord. And let's bless the offering this Thank morning. You, Jesus. This is my tithe and offering, Thank and we will do Jesus. what God says we'll do. The windows of heaven are open over Thank me in my house, Jesus. and such blessings have been released that I knew, do not have adequate room to contain them all. Yes, I am Lord. the seed of Abraham, and the oath Thank God swore you, to him is my inheritance. Therefore, I release yes, my Lord. tithes and my offerings to the fertile soul of his presence in Jesus name be blessed Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister, Sheila's, sister Sheila is going to call us into worship let's lift him up give him your very best praise this morning what a mighty God he's worthy church Hallelujah. Worthy. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah Oh, glory, 
Jesus. Oh. 
stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper.
do. Come on, lift up your heart to the Lord. Come on, just lift up your voice to the Lord. Oh, he's so good. He's so wonderful. He's so good. He's so wonderful. He's everything that we sang and so much more. He is worthy. He's holy. He's righteous. He's so much more. He's so much more. lift your hands to the Lord. Can you just begin to lift your hands into the Lord and offer up a sacrificial praise to the Lord this morning? Your way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, the one who gave you a word and he is holding strong to that word. Oh, he is the light in the darkness. He is the light that is shining and breaking forth through the darkness this morning. He is your God. One If he's ever made a way for you, I challenge you this morning to give him a clap of praise. If he's ever done a miracle in your life, I challenge you to offer up a praise to this King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, he is God. He is the only living God. And he's worthy this morning. If he's ever kept a promise, if he ever gave you your word and saw it to fulfillment, I challenge you to lift up a praise to the one who watches over his word this morning. Oh, he's a healer. He's a miracle worker. He is Jesus. He is the son of God. He is the risen one. He says, I am he that was dead and now I am alive forevermore. He's a soon coming king coming back for a glorious bride. Oh, come on. He's worthy of your praise this morning. He's worthy of a shout of praise. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come we serve a living God this morning. Come on, I with no music, I'm asking you to stand to your feet and give the living God a praise. Your way maker, your promise keeper, your miracle worker. Church, there is a breakthrough in this house, but it will all come through with praise. We sit by and take what the devil's given us long enough. There is a praise and a worship that needs to spring forth from the inside out. Complacency has to go. Laziness has to go. There is a sacrificial praise that belongs to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Mando ho shakara ba ma neando hora ba ba yehe. Come on, church, release a sound this morning. Release a sound this morning. It has, you have to open up your mouth and release a sound this morning. It cannot come from me. It cannot come from Carl, but it has to come from you. Jesus wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear a sound coming from you. He desires your praise. He desires your worship. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm going to tell you this. And if the pastor was here, he would tell you the same thing. It is a crying shame that we live in the United States of America. And I have to stand up here and prop and prop to get worship out of Christians, out of believers. We are believers. He is in us. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you. He's worthy of praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy of praise this morning. The fact that we came to church without persecution this morning. He's worthy of praise. The fact that you have a car 
Lord to drive here together with brothers and sisters. He's worthy of praise. He saved me from a pit. He delivered me from addiction. I serve a good God. I serve a good God. There is a sound that needs to erupt from his people. Mando hoshakara baha ye he. You may walk through a little hell. He said there'll be tribulation in this earth, but be of good cheer. Amen. I have overcome the world. Amen. I'm all here. I'm all here to tell you, life is not easy, but I walk with the one who gives life. It gives life more abundantly. Mando ho shanda babahaye. I'm telling you this morning, there needs to be a praise. If you don't have a praise in your heart, I welcome you to come find Jesus at the altar. <laughs> if you lost your joy, come and find it at the altar. Let me tell you what's wrong with church people. We think repentance is a one-time thing. I'm going to here tell you, everybody in this house better say, I repent, Lord. I repent. I changed my mind on how I lived yesterday, how I woke up this morning. I want to walk Amen. with you, Lord. Amen. Praise him. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Church isn't a social club. This is where we gather. Forsake not to assemble yourselves together. We come for one purpose. One purpose. One mind. One accord to lift up the name of Jesus. If you don't come for that, get to the altar. It's time that we bring repentance back into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. It's about time we preach deliverance again. Christians walking around in bondage. Walking around tormented by evil spirits. Oh no, I believe in Jesus. Yeah, you do, but you're in bondage. The demons believe in Jesus. Amen. I'm here to tell you, this is an open place right here. The altar is open. Deliverance is here. Healing is here. Repentance is here for you. I'm going to ask us one more time to lift up a sound from every voice in this house to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Holy One, the Risen One. Come on, do it. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise you, Jesus. Oh, glory, glory, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory unto the King. Praise unto you, Jesus. Mando Hosea Babaya. Praise and glory. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory. Oh, Holy, holy, holy. Holy Lord God Almighty. Holy Lord Jesus. Come on, I'm praying for a new revelation of who Jesus is this morning. Jesus, reveal yourself afresh, new to us today. Reveal yourself as way maker. Reveal yourself as a miracle worker. Reveal yourself and remind us that you're a promise keeper today. 
Oh, and remind us, Lord, that your light is greater than any darkness in this world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Open our eyes. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord. him hallelujah thank you dear heavenly father we praise you lord jesus thank you jesus thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord i'll tell you some of the greatest moves will begin from repentance the greatest moves will begin when we surrender all and give god our yes Thank you, Jesus. We're hungry for you, Lord. We're hungry for you, Jesus. We're hungry for you, Lord. We're hungry for you, Jesus. We are hungry for you, Lord. We are hungry for you, Jesus. Oh, we want to know you more, Lord. We want to know you more, Lord. We want to know you more, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, how we need you, Jesus. How we need you, Lord. How we need you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I have given unto you a gift of eternal life. I've given unto you a way that you can live forever. I've given unto you all the time. And all I require of you is to lift your hearts unto me. All I ask of you is to be awake for just a little while. That you may 
feel the glory that I have for you than the things I have to give to you. For it is not just a thing to do in, in these days. It is a preparing for days to come. For things that's not going to be as easy as it is now. But the time yet to come will be a trying time. So now is the time. Lift your hearts and be joyful. For the, the time is short. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. Oh, Lord, accept what I have. Yeah, oh, Lord, I pray. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Oh, let me humble myself before you, Lord. Let me give unto you, O oh Lord, what you desire of me, Lord. Make me capable, make me able, O oh Lord. For I am weak and I am small, but thine is great, O oh Lord God. So let me lift my heart unto you and my mind. Let me see the path that I need to travel. But, O oh Lord God, for thine art the way maker. And I trust and give my heart only unto you. Praise you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. Oh, Lord God. Oh, Lord God. We are thy people, oh, Lord. Have mercy upon us, oh, Lord. Let thy grace abide with us, oh, Lord given to you, Lord, all that I have, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, shine now, he said, O oh Lord, for thine, O oh Lord, is almighty and all great and all good. And I lay upon you, O oh Lord, by thy hand and thy guidance. Shalom, he said, they could have us. Sometimes we think that we're a strong human being, but when you get in the presence of God, He will humble the mightiest of the mightiest yes, of this world. For we not in even compare to His glory or amen. to His power. Sometimes we, we get selfish and pulled into our, our thoughts and into our mm -hmm, ways that's right. that ended our life, and we think, oh, if I do this, it's going to make my life better. But yeah. God has already made our life better. He's so good. Now we need to just share it with one another. Yes, amen. We need to glorify him all, at all yeah. times. Yeah. I think, you know, every day, every day, it's a constant thing. Absolutely. Life's Stay right. in prayer all the time. Cease not. That's prayer right. means talking, talking to God. Mm -hmm. Talk to him. He, yes. he, is, he is our, you know, when my father was living, I relied on him when I was small for everything. And... I would go ask him when I had a problem, and he, he helped me with it. But I respected him mm -hmm. for who he was. Yeah. How much greater is our Heavenly Father? Yeah, come on. He's so that? good. He is good. Yes, so good. Amen. Oh, I love y'all. <laughs> we love you, too. Would y'all be okay if I shared a little word with you? Is that Amen. all right? Okay. I, I'm just going to share. I, I don't have a lot, if, uh, but I'll, I'm going to share what... So, if it's okay, we're just going to share the Word of God this morning. <clears throat> Can we just give Jesus one more clap of praise? How, how great was Easter last week, too, by the way? So beautiful. It was such a beautiful time. Uh, as you all know, my brother and sister-in-law was here, and so... We talked about it on Thursday, but it was just a few weeks ago. Sister Rock reminded us it was just a few weeks ago. On a Thursday night, my mom had Piper and Nate, or Nick. Nick, if Nick was here, would be mad. I called him Nate. That happens all the time. But uh, a lot of N-words, so uh, in names And so he, they were all sitting right here on the first row worshiping the Lord. And, uh, and my mom, after church was over, she said, uh, I'm just going to declare that you'll see my whole family sitting in the 
in the house of the Lord. And just a few weeks later, the whole family is sitting in the house of the Lord. So how awesome is that? Listen, I just think it's a start of what God's doing. And so I just want to encourage us today to, to keep, keep praying, keep faith, keep believing what God is doing. Um, so I loved last week. It was so wonderful. And there's so much I would tell, I could tell about that and what that meant with my brother being here and even afterwards, just the family time we had. It was so special and so wonderful. And I thank the Lord for that. And I love that we were able to preach the gospel and had some, you know, seeds sown here last week. So I'm so grateful for all that. But Easter's over, right? And so we've preached. We preached that he died. He, he you know, rose again. He suffered for us. And so what's next? So I'm going to go ahead and tell you, be very blunt and honest and open with you all, that this notice that I was going to be here, Pastor Bill was not going to be here, was not as it didn't give me a length of time that I technically appreciate to have to really dive into what God wants to say. So I, these are not how I keep notes on this piece of paper. So I'm really nervous to share, but let this be a, (laughs) let this be a seed. And I just challenge you to go home and dig into it a bit more, but I I really want to come with encouragement to this, this morning and encourage us that what, what, What's next? And sometimes we can ask that question in any area of our life, like, what's next, Lord? Okay, I'm here, but what's next? And so that's what happens next is kind of the the phraseology I want to work with today. So we're going to bow our heads and just ask the Lord to give me the right words and to be a good communicator with with his word this morning and um, ask for the seed to be sown. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. I thank you that your word is alive and it is powerful. So Lord, we just ask that this word go forth and plant a seed in our hearts, God, to trust you, to have faith in you, Lord, and to see your word performed in our lives. God, we give you all praise and honor in Jesus' name. Everyone says? Listen, I forget to do this quite often, so please forgive me if it offends you, but I like to read out of the New Living Translation. It's just an easier read for me sometimes, and it's a smaller Bible, so it's thin line, so I pack it up with me, and I take it. So if um, it'll read a little bit different than what you're going to see on the board. I'm going to be in Luke 24, starting out in verses 46 through 49. I I think we can all keep together, so I apologize. I meant to grab my new King James, and um, I grabbed this one. So Luke 24, uh, verses 46 through 49, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Verse 46 says, and he said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. Verse 47, and was all, it was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. Can we say amen? <laughs> we are witnesses of all these things. And this is Jesus talking, by the way, in verse 49. And he says, And now I will send the Holy Spirit, just as my Father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Um, While you're there, would you just turn over to Acts 1 and just keep your finger there? So historians and Bible theologians will tell you that the Dr. Luke here wrote the Luke according to witnesses' accounts. And he also wrote the book of Acts. And before the Bible was canonized, Luke and Acts were all together in one book. And when they canonized the Bible, they split Luke and what we now call the book of Acts into two books. So just just something, I've I've done it once. uh, If you ever read through the book of Luke, skip John and go to Acts, and it'll read as one cohesive story. I just think it's kind of cool. So Luke is writing here in Luke from the witness accounts, and then we jump over to Acts, and let's go to Acts 1 and 4. And um, it says, once he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. He said, do not leave or tarry here or wait here. So I want to come off of that topic of what happens next. So here you have Jesus. He died. He hung out for 40 days, walking around, visiting with people, doing, you know, he showed up on the walk to Emmaus. He showed up and just walked through a wall to his disciples. He's hanging out, and he gives them one last thing. The the disciples are like, 
Okay, he died, but now he's here. What happens next? And what's the first thing he told him? Wait. Do not leave. Do not move until you receive this promise from on high. And I love that because sometimes when we think something else is supposed to happen, we ourselves, Lisa mainly, all fingers pointing this way, I will want to rush into what happens next, right? I want to go into what I think should happen next. How many of us can relate to that? This is what I think God should do. God, is this how you're going to work it out? Let me help you in this. And so I want to rush into the next thing that happens. And what did he say to his people who had been with him for three and a half years? Wait. Do not leave. Um, I, if you want to, you can turn to John 21. And this is where it's just right there by Acts. But if you remember this story, this is where Jesus is coming to them. And he says, and you can start in verse 1. It, it says here, we'll just read it together, verses uh, 1 through 3. This is where we'll start. It says, Later Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Verse 2, several of the disciples were there, Simon, Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. So Peter was waiting upon the Lord and got tired of waiting. And what did he do? Went back to comfortable familiar. What happens next? What do we do next? And Peter says, I don't know what to do next, but I'll tell you what I'm about to do. I'm going fishing. I was a fisherman before. I'm still a fisherman at heart. I'm going fishing. So he hops on a boat and he starts going fishing. They didn't know what to do next. Even though they had walked with Jesus for three and a half years, he told them over and over and over again, I'm going to die. <laughs> They're going to kill me. I'm, I'm here to suffer. This is what the prophecy said. It's written in the Old Testament. I'm here to fulfill these things. Peter and the disciples still didn't know what to do. What's next? What's next, Lord? We had you. We see you. But we know you're not here to stay. What happens next? How many of you just felt like that? But even recently, what's next? What's next? What's next, Lord? We see bursts of revival in this world. What's next, Lord? What's next? I see a little hope in my family. What's next, Lord? Do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you see a glimpse of the future and you're like, what's next? How do I get there? I've told people this for a long time. And I feel like it's for the body of believers as much as it is for individuals. I feel like we're right here and right there's the promise and I don't know how to get there. Does that make sense? What's next? What happens if I leave this spot and I can still, it's right there. What's next? Do I go back? I can't go back to what I used to do. That's miserable. You're uncomfortable. I guarantee you Peter was not happy on that boat fishing. Number one, he didn't catch anything until Jesus came to the shore. No fisherman's happy unless they're catching fish. My dad's a fisherman. <laughs> Ask him how, his, when he comes in pouting, you already know he didn't catch no fish. He's not happy unless he's catching fish. So Peter was miserable. He was not, he, he lost his best friend. He didn't know what was going to happen next. But he went fishing. And I feel like that's where we're at sometimes. We're right here. And Jesus said, wait, don't move. Don't you take a, a, another step. I'm coming. Jesus showed up on the shore that day, and he says, have you caught anything? <laughs> Cast your nets on the other side. And look, guess what Peter did? You already know, but I love to tell this story. Peter, he says, John looks at Peter and says, that's our Lord. Peter takes his coat, dives into the water, and swims. The Bible, they, the historians record it's probably 200 feet that he swam. By the time he gets to shore, the boat's caught up with him. He was so like, that's him. I can see him right there. I have to get to him. I've got to get to the one who made me a promise. Sometimes I think we're like, what's next? And I don't know about you, but sometimes when I get overwhelmed and I don't know what's next, I don't always turn to the Lord. Complete transparency. I want to hide in a cave and just wait for God to send the fire and the wind and the rain. And it's not in that. He already proved that to Elijah. What's next? Don't you move a spot because there's a promise coming to you. 
You see, they didn't have to chase the promise. He said, you tarry here because I'm sending you a promise from on high to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That you have to wait right here because it's coming to you. So many times I take a misstep. Do you know me how many times I've been around a mountain because I got, I went ahead of the Lord? How many times have you went around a mountain? Yeah, come on. We take the detours, we take the delays because we get so anxious and it's because you have that. Your spirit is recognizing inside of you. Oh, I see it. I feel it. But our flesh don't know what to do. So what do we do? Oh gosh, I'm going to go fishing. Oh my gosh, I'll go over here. I'll start this. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll do this. Terry here. Terry here. Do not leave this spot until you know. And you're like, how will I know? They knew when they got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Not just them, but the whole town did. They're drunk. They're, they're, oh my gosh, these people lost their minds. Let me tell you something. You'll know when the promise comes. You'll know when it hits you. You're going to know that you know that you know that you waited in the right spot for the one who sends the promise to you. I thought about David out in the backfield. I call it the back 40 at my mama's house. They park all weird. I have to walk forever to get to the door. It's true. Do you know why they park weird in their driveway? They want to watch the birds from their chairs inside. Aren't they precious? <laughs> They're so precious. So I say, Lord, I've, packed, I've parked in the back 40. So it's not really that bad of a walk, but I'm just teasing. So here's David. He's out in the field. We already know from his story that he's out there. I always like to say he's, he's playing his harp when he, on his downtime, you know. He's probably writing a little poetry. And uh, we know he's killed a bear and a lion. He's protecting that herd. And then Samuel comes, and he calls for him. And he anoints him to be king. Y'all, it took seven years. Seven years. And what did he do? The first thing he did was went back to the field. Samuel shows up, does sacrifice, anoints him, leaves, and David remains. He, I, he had to be thinking, what happens next? <laughs> what happens next? So what did he do? He went to the back, back to the last commandment he had. Go tend the sheep, David. Sometimes, as people... We hear the word of the Lord, and the, last, the next thing that we have to do is the last thing the Lord told us. Terry here, if that's what it is. Get prepared. For me, sometimes I had to clean out a closet. I feel like I have to go and purge the closet because he's purging something in me. He's like, go back here because I'm doing something in you so I can bring you the promise over here. But see, David had to go humbly tend. And then what did he have to do? He then goes serve Saul by playing his little baby harp for Saul to chase away the demons. Bless that poor little baby's heart. And then little David had to go out and go to war and fend for his own life because Saul was so jealous he was out to kill him. I'm telling you, waiting for the promise to happen is not always easy. But if you will do the last thing the Lord told you, his protection is over you. He will see to it. There's not a devil in hell. There's not a person that can hinder it. There's nothing that can stop it. What happens next? I'll do the last thing he told me to do. He told me to pray. He told me to fast. He told me to worship. He told me to say in the word. The last thing that he told me to do. It may take seven years. I don't care if you're running here and there like David had to. The promise is coming to you. There is a promotion. There is a revival. There is an outpouring. There is salvation. And it is coming to the house of the Lord. So what happens next? We taste and see that the Lord is good. We taste and see of the glory. And then what happens next? I'll tell you what I see happen in church all the time. We sit. We don't do nothing. They didn't tarry in silence. Picture yourself as one of the disciples. And Jesus literally just ascended to heaven before your eyes. I would literally be like, did you all see that? And then I would remember, do you remember that time he rose that person from the dead? Do you remember that time we were feeding 5,000 people? They talked about him. They prayed. They worshiped. 120 people waiting. Let me tell you something. When he says to wait, he doesn't mean to silence yourself. 
okay doesn't mean that you sit there. Oh, it's coming to me. He says, do something. I know that may sound confusing. We don't want to step out of place, but you have to do something sitting there. Even if it's just praying and saying the word over and over, there's a great outpouring. You promise an outpouring of your people. You promise prodigals are coming home. That is doing something. When you sit in silence, you make room for the enemy. The Bible says, do not give place to the enemy. We don't give a foothold to the devil. When you sit in silence, you have now given the devil a foothold to come in with his lies and begin to tell you that that word isn't coming true. You're not good enough. You're not worthy of it. The Lord didn't mean what he said. Oh, he doesn't say that. Okay. What did he do to Eve? Surely you won't die. I'm telling you, when you sit in silence, you allow the enemy place to lie to you. And the longer you listen, the more you believe. The more you believe, the longer that promise gets from you. Because now that word is now an illusion to you. The word becomes an illusion because all you hear are the lies of the enemy. Surely God didn't mean it that way. Don't tell me it's not true. I know we have battles in our minds. It is the place where he wars with you the most. And when he can't get there, he'll come to, he'll bring someone physically to you. Oh, Lord, bless your heart. I don't know if your kids are ever going to get saved. Shut your mouth, devil. Get behind me. I'm here to tell you right now, start rebuking word curses that come to you from people. They are sent, whether they know it or not, by the enemy to bring lies to you because you blocked him out here, so he's going to bring him right here. You're like, I can't do that. Jesus did straight to Peter. Get behind me, Satan. He looked at Peter, the one who denied him three times and then he redeemed him three times. And he said, get behind me, Satan. I will not accept a word curse. I have to do it all the time. I'm sure you guys do too in your daily life. People will say something about even the weather. I'm like, I, re I refuse that word. I'll tell you. I had to go to the doctor and she said something. She said, that doesn't ever get better. And I said, oh, it will. <laughs> it's going to get better. She says, this particular thing, it's not going to kill you, but you'll, it will never get better. It's always going to be this way from now on. I said, mm-mm. I called my mom later. I was like, I reject that word. She's just doing her job. She's, I'm sure she's a sweet person in real life. She's just doing her job. But I refuse that word. What happens next? The last thing he told me. If that's preparation, get prepared, get in the word, stay in the word. If it's worship, whatever it is, maybe he gave you a specific task. Do the last thing he told you to do. That's what David had to do for seven years. Then promotion came. Then the palace came. Then I thought about Joseph. Sweet little Joseph. So excited about his little baby dreams. And he walks up to his brothers. You're not going to believe this, guys. You're all going to bow down to me. They were so infuriated with him. They took him, as you know, threw him in a pit. Well, and here's something I just listened to this morning, actually. They took him and threw him in a pit. The brothers take his beautiful color, coat of many colors. They smear some blood on it, and they take it to his papa. And they said, they just handed him the coat. And he says, oh, my gosh, my son is dead. Lies will fabricate fake evidence. Lies will fabricate fake evidence. If you start believing lies, guess what? You'll start seeing the truth of those lies. Does that make sense? I know that's a little contradictory wording. But a lot of times, if you believe a lie, all of a sudden you'll start seeing things about that lie. Does that make sense? You will. You'll start saying it. You'll start hearing it. You'll start seeing it. And all of a sudden you're like, oh gosh, that really, maybe the Lord isn't going to do that. Because the loved one gets worse, so to speak. Or the sickness doesn't get better right away. So all of a sudden, we believe the lie that we're always going to have this illness. And so maybe the pain, all of a sudden, that pain gets worse. You're like, oh, yes. You know, things like that. So they didn't even have to tell him that the son was dead. He just saw the coat and was like, I believe this. Okay, it's over. So then they bring him out of the pit. They put him into slavery. From slavery, he goes to Potiphar's house. From Potiphar's house, he goes to prison. 
Y'all, there's not a single word that I can find in Genesis that tells us that God ever spoke to Joseph again. He had one dream, two dreams. He had a dream. And for what, 13 plus years, all he had was a dream? What happens next? Can you imagine when he's in prison? Okay, Lord, what happens next? What happens next, Lord? He had one thing to hold on to. One thing that God made him a promise when he was a kid. One day, God, you're going to promote me here. I know, God, you showed me this in a dream. I know, Lord, but I'm in prison. And everywhere he went, though, I will say this, everywhere he went, he found favor in the Lord's sight. He became the head of the household at Potiphar's, but that wasn't where God had him. Do you see? He could have got comfortable there. And then he became like a ruler in the prison. He probably had badges on his, you know, like, oh, look at me, I'm, I'm good in prison. He could have got comfortable there. But see, he had a gift. He had a calling, and he knew that God had more for him. He wasn't going to get comfortable in prison. He wasn't going to get comfortable at Potiphar's house. He definitely wasn't comfortable in slavery. But he had a promise. He had a gift. He had a calling, what the Lord was bringing him to. And that is what happens next. I hold on to the word. I hold on to what God spoke to me. That's all you got. Sometimes that's all you have. I have been there. I have been there where all you say is, God, I know what you spoke to me. I was going through some health things privately. I, I didn't really tell much, many people. And it just got worse. And I was in my car, and I, was, I, I yelled at my mom, not yelling at her. I was just yelling in general. <laughs> not at her. It wasn't directed to my mom. And we hung up, and I just started shouting to the Lord. I don't understand. See, questions don't mean doubt. But I said, I don't understand why. And I finished every sentence like this. I would yell at the Lord. I don't know why. I believe you're a healer. I have all the faith in the world to know. I've seen it with my eyes. What? Why, God? Why? And then I ended it like this. No matter what happens, I will go down saying you're my healer. And he healed me. I won't tell you. It, it's gone. It's gone. I am fine. And it, but I had this moment of shouting. But all I had was one word. And it wasn't a word from above. It was in his scripture that says, by his stripes, we are healed or we were healed. That's all I had. That's it. What happens next when the sickness doesn't go away? I stand on the word of God no matter what. What happens next when I'm sitting in a pit and I don't know why I'm here? I have a word from God that he says I have a purpose and a destiny and expect it in for you. My thoughts towards you are good and a peace. What happens next? What happens next? The Bible says in 40, Psalms 46, 10 says, be still and know that I am God. I heard a little word study on that, be still. And the Hebrew is to let go. And sometimes we just have to let go and trust that he is God. I don't know about you, and I don't try to be a control freak in a lot of things, but I am like a helper. I feel like I'm a, let me help you, Jesus. You know, I want to just say the right words and do the right thing. I sometimes have to break off performance in my life. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> and so I think what he's saying is just if you, if you can let go of the reins enough to see that I am faithful and true to what I tell you, then you're going to see what happens next. <sighs> that you can see what happens next. I'll, I've shared this story before. I'm going to share two stories with you, the personal stories, if you don't mind, and then I'll pray and we can go. Um, I told this story in here before, so if you heard it, please forgive me. But um, I have a, my friend, she loves to go on trails and walking. And one time she called me and she said, Lisa, we have to go on this walk together. I said, okay, well, tell me about it. She says, well, it starts out like a normal trail. 
And then when you get to this spot, it's like you've entered into Hawaii. I said, what? She goes, they have these big magnolia leaves and they, they look like tropical leaves. And there's water that runs beside the trail and the atmosphere changes. It drops like 10 degrees. You feel like in the tropics and it's beautiful. That's all she told me. I said, girl, let's go. Literally the next weekend we go. So I get to this trail and most of you in here know me. I have, I'm working through, I won't say I have, I'm working through overcoming a fear of heights. And when I say fear of heights, like, I don't mean like it always has to be super tall. Like sometimes standing on this little altar can like trigger it and it's bad. So, but I've been doing things to overcome it and the Lord's been helping me greatly. <laughs> and so, I do. so anyways, you hold my hand. So, uh, anyhow, it's okay if she's here. Does that bother anybody? <laughs> okay. She's sweet. <laughs> so, uh, my friend takes me, y'all, and we get on this trail. And she goes, we're almost there. And so, uh, when we get there, it's these rock stairs. And I'm uneasy <laughs> on that because on one, one side, on this side, is a mossy rock. And on this side is, I feel like, the cliff to my doom, you know. <laughs> it's not. To you, it'd be normal. To me, it's a cliff to my doom. And I, so my friend just runs right up the stairs, and she's standing at the top, and she looks at me, and I said, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I seriously don't know if I can handle this. And she looks at me, and she says, I, and that's why this is verbatim, she says, Lisa, you can, we can go right now, and we will have a beautiful day. Or you can trust me that it's okay, and you can climb these stairs, and there's something beautiful on the other side. <laughs> I didn't know how spiritual that was, Sister Dot, until like a week later, and the Lord reminded me what she said. And sometimes I feel like that's what we're doing. Jesus is at the top of the stairs, and he's saying, you, can, you don't have to go any further if you don't want to. It's okay. You'll have a beautiful life. I'm still going to bless you. It's going to be abundant. But if you trust me to take these stairs and climb these stairs, I have something really beautiful on the other side for you. And so many times we step at the stairs and it's okay. It's okay. There's no judgment here. He's not saying you have to. But but it's so beautiful when you climbed over. You guys, when I walked over, she wasn't wrong. My friend told me the truth, just like Jesus is telling you the truth. There is something really good on the other side of here. The climate did change. The water was beautiful. The atmosphere was completely different than it was on the other side. Do you get the spiritual ramifications of this? The atmosphere is so different. If you'll just climb the stairs and go over, it's going to take the extra push in worship. It's going to take the extra push of prayer. It's going to take the extra push of fasting. But I promise you, if you will trust the Lord, it's something really beautiful on the other side. Here's my hope and my cry for this church is that we can push to get to the top of the stairs because we're this close to seeing something really beautiful in this area. We're so close to see revival breaking out in Claybrook County. And it's just going to take us to trust the Lord to climb the stairs because something beautiful is on the other side. I'm going to share one more story with you. Again, it's me climbing heights that I wasn't prepared for. So... We went to Clingman's Dome, same friend. And that is the highest peak in the Smokies. <laughs> and that hike up there is no joke. I don't care if you're fit or not fit. I saw skinny people, people like me, they all struggling. Everybody was struggling. So if you struggle, it's okay. Everybody was struggling if you ever take it. So if you've seen the pictures or done the climb yourself, then you know. Once you get to the top, there's still, you got to climb that ramp thing, Karen, all the way to the top. So I thought for sure I could do it, Deb. I thought, this is it. I can do this one. <laughs> I mean, I did. But So when I start walking on it, what, what freaks me out, if you have a fear of height, I'm working through my fear of heights. I'm not claiming. But pray for me. <laughs> so when, you're, when you have fear of heights, if there's slight movement, it makes all of a sudden, it's irrational, right? Fears are irrational. So my rationality is coming in and telling me that this thing's going to collapse. It's been there for 100 years. It's not going to collapse, Lisa. You know, you got to talk yourself off the ledge. So I start climbing this ramp, and I get to a spot. Now, the weather's different up there 
than it is, you know, when you're at the bottom of the mountain. Bottom of the mountain, you're taking your jacket off. When you get to the top, you want a parka on. You need your scarf, gloves, everything, because it's like cold. So part of the, the ramp was icy. So I'm clinging to the side over here, and I, and I stop. Now, my, she's going to be me for a second. My friend is behind me, and she has her little hand on my back. And I, I looked at her, and I said, Trish, I can't go. I said, I'm so sorry, but I'm, I'm, I'm white-knuckling the bar, okay? And I said, I can't go. And she says, I said, I don't want to ruin this trip for you. Please go without me. I'll be fine. I will, I will make my way down this ramp. I'm halfway up, okay? And I'll make my way down this ramp, and I'll be okay. I promise you. you. It won't bother me. You stay as long as you want to. She starts praying. We're not giving the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. In the name of Jesus. That's my friend praying for me behind me. And so I, I say, okay, okay. And so I take a couple more steps. And I stop again because that fear was gripping. And I stopped, and I said, I said, I really can't, Trish. I can't. There's tons of people there. Something else you should know about me is I'm a slight people pleaser. The Lord's delivering me of that as well. <laughs> and so this sweet little lady comes down. And at this point, I have moved to the icy side because I'm thinking, if I stay over here, people will leave me alone. Right? Does that sound like, do we see the spiritual symbolism here? So I'm standing in the icy side, and this sweet little lady says, Honey, get over here. You're going to slip and fall. Come on up. I'll wait on you. Well, I can't say no <laughs> because my people pleaser kicks in. I'm like, okay, my friend's behind me the entire time. And so I grab the little pole and I'm like this. So then she passes me. So I go back to the icy side clinging. And this one lady says, oh, no, honey, you cannot walk there. Look at that ice. Come over here. So I had to move again. And when I moved again, this I, I don't even know how the last few feet happened, but all of a sudden, Sister Deb, I stood to the top and tears started flowing down my eyes, and I said, I don't know how you just got me up here, but you put me to the top of this hill, and I'm here to tell you that there's sometimes you're not going to know how you got there. You're not going to know how you showed up there, but there was a push from the Holy Ghost saying you're not given a spirit of fear, but a power, a love, and a sound mind, and you're going to find yourself at the top where the promise has been waiting on you the entire time. What happens next? The Holy Ghost is pushing you up to the top. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Do you see his word from the beginning has been telling you, you can make it. What happened next? You're going to make it to the top. You're going to see the promises fulfilled. What happens next? He fulfills every word. Fulfills every word. I stood there crying at the top of this thing. I didn't care who saw me. And I said to them, I said to the Lord before I ever turned around and looked at my friend who's behind me the entire time. Do you see she represents the Holy Spirit in this story? I looked above and I said, I don't know how you got me here, but I'm here. And I turned around with tears in my eyes and she says, did you just see what God did? I said, do I ever? I'm standing at the top, the tallest peak in the Smoky Mountains with a push of the Holy Ghost. What happens next? I promise you guys. It's coming. It's happening. Even now as we speak, he's never stopped working on his promise to you. There's not been a moment that he has ever looked at you and said, I give up. There's not a moment that he's ever looked at the promises that he has given you. And I don't care where you are in your age, how little, how, how much advanced we are. He's never stopped. He's never stopped. What happens next? I promise you, trust him, you'll get to the top. Sometimes it's like the first story. You have to take the step. And sometimes it's like the second one because it seems so overwhelming. It was the tallest peak and I thought, I can never get up there. I can't do this. I cannot do this. And all of a sudden there was pushes from the Holy Spirit through people isn't that beautiful that he'll use people to get you where you need to be? Isn't that beautiful that he'll take this human frail body and he'll come along and say, Sister Deb, you can do it. 
Sister Nikki, hang in there. You got this, girl. God is going before you. If God is for you, Sister Sheila, who can be against you? Sister, Sister Jan, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Oh, God. Isn't it wonderful, Sister Dot, that he'll send somebody your way and say you've walked through the valley of the shadow of death and you will fear no evil. Isn't it beautiful that there's a God that says, I've got more in store for you, Sister Leslie. Isn't it wonderful that he's got more for us and he'll send somebody your way just in time to tell you that you can make it. Just in time to say, be still and trust the Lord. Be still and trust God. What happens next, Brother Russell, is that God says, I'm not done. I'm not finished. I've got more for you. The best is yet to come. Your better days are ahead of you. Can somebody declare that right now? My better days are ahead of me. I am here to tell you, Sister Mickey, that your better days are just beginning. Oh, it's been good and it's nice to look back, but I'm telling you, look forward and take a step because the best days are yet to come. Hallelujah. What happens next? Oh, the disciples sat in a dark and weary place, wondering what happens next until they were told to wait for the promise on high. I'm here to tell you, wait for the promise. Wait for the promise. What happens next? I'm here to tell you, he has an expected end for you. <laughs> His plans for you are to prosper and to be in good health. I'm telling you guys, it's all in his word. It's right there. It's right there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Will you walk with me up here? You want to go sit with me? I'm sorry, you guys. Listen, I'm passing the anointing on. <laughs> you know? Thank you, Jesus. What happens next? Uh, let's look one last scripture. I'm sorry. Jeremiah 1 and 12. I thank you, Jesus. I want to take a portion of this scripture. Yeah, she got it. Okay, good. I don't have to find Then the Lord said unto me, Thou hast seen, well seen, for I have, I will hasten my word to perform it. Another translation says, I will watch my word to perform it. I'm here to tell you he cherishes his word. He cherishes his word that he gives to you. He, his word is so precious to him and I hope it's so precious to you because he's watching over it in your lives to see it performed. What happens next? He's going to perform his word. Amen. Come on. Can you give the Lord a shout of praise this morning? Hallelujah. 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 What happened in Acts is that kept filled and filled again and filled again and filled again. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is they continuously flow. Fill us as we pour out. Fill us as we pour out. They went spreading the good news. Can I say this too before as we leave, as we get ready to go? The disciples in the book of Acts were facing such great persecution. There was great darkness in the world. But yet they still continue to spread the word of the Lord. Sometimes we see darkness in the world and it brings fear or we think, oh Lord, you know, is this the end? Or, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I know the end is nearing. I'm not saying that at all. But what I want to say is sometimes we see darkness and we don't, we don't move forward, right? Because it's like, it's overwhelming. But I'm here to tell you that even in spite of darkness, that's when the Lord moves the most because he's the light and he goes forth and comprehends the darkness. So I know things don't always look great in the world, but I just want to tell you that that's when God's moving right now. Share the gospel, pour it out, go spread it like wildfire because that's what's going to change this world is the Holy Spirit. So um, if, does anyone need special prayer this morning?
Yeah. Let's remember them right now. Anyone else? Well, let's, I'm sorry. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. He's, he's so kind. Yes, thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Let's remember these two requests. <clears throat> if you don't care, just bow your head. Lord, we just come to you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up this man and his daughter, Lord. Right now, we just send the word of healing to them, God. I'm casting out a spirit of infirmity, Lord, and touching the this man's body, Lord, and touching his daughter's body right now. Lord, make them whole and complete in you, Jesus. Lord, let the healing power touch him that he feels it even now, God. Let sugar diabetes dry up, Lord. Let this back be healed, Lord, in the name of of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, we, we know that you're sending angels before Sister Deb and Melissa right now. God, we just thank you, Lord, for a safe procedure, Lord, and a quick recovery, God. Lord, we thank you that you go before us and make the crooked path straight, and we give you all, all praise in advance for what you're doing, Lord Jesus. We thank you for how you're moving in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so that's all I have. <laughs> and I hope you all have a blessed and wonderful Sunday. Thank you so much for being here. Listen, God is moving. God is moving. Have a wonderful day.